Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Natni and today we're discussing the mandibular nerve. Uh, so before I get started, do not forget to subscribe to my channel, I make anatomy a piece of cake. Let's get started. So guys, mandibular nerve, uh, I hope you remember, is a branch of the trigeminal nerve. Now trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve which emerged directly from the brain, right? It is known as the trigeminal nerve because it gives its three chief branches from the trigeminal ganglion. So guys, you remember there's this trigeminal ganglion which is kept in the middle cranial fossa in the Michels cave. And the trigeminal ganglion gave the mandibular nerve sensory root. Remember that. So let's talk about first its origin. As we always talk about any structure, we should always go through the bullet points. The first thing of the mandibular nerve is that its origin is from a sensory and a motor root. That's how nerves usually start because they have to supply sensory and motor fibers, right? From the sensory root, we know it's from the trigeminal ganglion within the middle cranial fossa. And then the motor root is also uh, emerging directly from the pons, but the motor root is lying deep to the trigeminal ganglion. So let's just suppose it's right here, all right? Uh, next, what happens is the mandibular nerve has somehow have to enter the infratemporal fossa, right? So through some foramen in the middle cranial fossa, it has to emerge. And when it will emerge, it will enter the infratemporal fossa. That is the foramen ovalis. These two roots will pass. And when they have passed this foramen ovale, that is when the mandibular nerve main trunk is formed. All right, so the origin continues for two uh, phases. First, the sensory root, motor root, and then when it has uh, entered the foramen ovale to enter the infratemporal IT fossa, that is when the mandibular nerve's main trunk is formed. Makes sense. Uh, once it has entered the infratemporal fossa, uh, otic ganglion, there's this ganglion basically, it's a parasympathetic ganglion, lies very uh, like associated with the nerve, all right? So that also comes right below the foramen ovale in the infratemporal fossa. Now, the only course for the mandibular nerve is that it runs for a short course on the tensor villi palatini and deep to the lateral pterygoid. And what happens next is that it divides into it two trunks, the anterior and posterior trunks, or you can even call them divisions. Uh, what's important in the mandibular nerve is what arises from these two divisions. All right, the posterior division is larger than the anterior division, remember that. So guys, uh, just let me remind you that the muscles of mastication are right over here, I've written them down. And what our aim today is that somehow the mandibular nerve has to supply all of these muscles of mastication and through its branches. So guys, let's talk about the branches from the division of the mandibular nerve. So first we have the main trunk of the uh, mandibular nerve, which before it divides into its two uh, divisions, first from the main trunk, some branches arise, which you should know. These are the two M's, the MM. One is the meningeal branch and one is for the medial pterygoid muscle, nerve to the medial pterygoid muscle. So this meningeal branch is known as the nervous spinosus. Why? Because it is about to pass through the foramen known as the foramen spinosum. So guys, uh, here's the trunk in the infratemporal fossa, right? So this nervous spinosus arises from the main trunk and it goes right back into the middle cranial fossa through the foramen spinosum. We all know where it's kept and it supplies the dura matter of the middle cran cranial fossa uh, because it's the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve, right? So it has to supply the meninges. After that, uh, the med nerve to medial pterygoid arises. First, muscle of mastication has been supplied. And from the medial pterygoid nerve, it also supplies the tensor villi palatini and the tensor tympani muscle of the ear. All right. These two branches arise from the main trunk. Next, we have the anterior divisions branches. The anterior division gives one three motor and one sensory branch. Now, the three motor, what do you think is it going to supply? The three motor is for the three muscle of mastications that are left. All right. It gives the nerve to lateral pterygoid. It gives the nerve to masseter. So the masseteric nerve, which passes through the mandibular notch. We've already talked about this. And finally, the deep temporal nerves, which are basically going to go ahead and supply the temporalis muscle. The one sensory branch it gives is known as the buccal nerve. The buccal nerve basically uh, travels uh, downwards and forwards and it goes where the buccinator is and it supplies the skin of the cheek because it's sensory so obviously it has to supply skin. It supplies the skin of the cheek and the mucous membrane kept over there right where the buccinator is kept. Now let's talk about the posterior division branches which are a lot more important. All right, these are the first branch is the auriculotemporal nerve. It's going to supply the auricle and the temporal area. Remember the names of every structure in anatomy gives off the most information about that structure. Next is the lingual nerve. I'm sure you've heard of this and I'm sure you've heard of the inferior alveolar nerve. So guys, this is arising from the posterior uh, division. 
and the lingual and inferior alveolar nerve are the terminal division. In this uh, image, you can see right here, you can see this is small anterior branch, which gave these uh, branches. And then you can see this is the large posterior uh, division of the mandibular nerve. It is giving the lingual nerve and the inferior alveolar nerve. And these are the two terminal branches of the mandibular nerve. And this is also a motor branch from the inferior alveolar nerve we'll talk about. So let's go ahead and talk about the first posterior division branch. This is known as the auricular temporal nerve. Now, what's interesting about the auricular temporal nerve is that it's going to run backwards. All right. Uh, the auricular temporal nerve arises from two roots, a sensory and a motor, obviously. And where its main trunk is formed, the middle and meningeal artery is kept right there. All right. The middle meningeal artery. Uh, which is coming from the maxillary artery, which was coming from the external carotid artery. The auricular temporal nerves to root uh, join and when they form the main trunk, they're basically lying close to this middle meningeal artery. That's an important part. And after that, once uh, shortly after this, it runs medial to the uh, as medial aspect of the neck of the mandible. We've talked about this and it runs, goes back. It travels posteriorly and it ascends posteriorly. Why? Because it has to supply your ear area and your temple area, obviously. So this is going to go backwards, right? Uh, the, so the auricular temporal artery, its auricle part is going to supply your uh, most of the structures of the ears uh, and these are going to be sensory supply. All right. Make sure you remember that the posterior division, all these nerves are mostly sensory except for a branch of the inferior alveolar nerve known as the mylohyoid nerve or the nerve to mylohyoid, which is going to carry all the motor fibers of the posterior division. Remember that. Then the temp temple part, temporal part of the auricular temporal nerve is going to supply your skin of the temple. All right. And apart from that, the auricular temporal nerve will also supply the very huge structure kept here. What is it known as the uh, parotid gland and the temporomandibular joint. So that is the course of auricular temporal nerve along with what it's supplying. That is important. I hope you can remember that. Next, we're going to talk about the lingual nerve is that arising from the posterior division it was also sensory it basically is going to uh, emerge one centimeter uh, below the skull that's where it originates and then two centimeter or another centimeter after it has traveled it is joined by the corda tympani nerve all right corda tympani is basically coming from the facial nerve it is carrying secretomotor fibers for the salivary glands and taste fibers for the anterior two thirds of the tongue where exactly your lingual nerve is going towards the tongue but lingual nerve is sensory it's going to give anterior two thirds of the tongue sensory supply all right uh, whereas the corda tympani that joins in it it gives fibers to the lingual nerve which are going to carry taste to the anterior two thirds as well i hope that makes sense because the fibers of feeling touch and the fibers of feeling taste are different so the lingual nerve is giving the sensory fibers to the anterior two thirds, whereas the corda tympani of the facial nerve is giving your gustatory or taste fibers to the tongue in the anterior two thirds. So now I'm sure you will, uh, you can remember that if anything happens to the lingual nerve, your anterior two thirds uh, taste and sensations will be lost. And uh, also another important clinical right here I'd like to point out is if there's anything wrong with the lingual nerve, your auricular, the pain will be referred to the distribution of auricular temporal nerve means anything happening to your lingual nerve causes pain in your ear and your temple area. After it has uh, got fibers two centimeter below the skull, it, what it does is it uh, goes medial to the third molar tooth and then it just goes ahead and supplies your uh, anterior two thirds of the tongue. Then we have the inferior alveolar nerve. Now what the inferior alveolar nerve is uh, doing is that it emerges and before it, it has to basically enter your mandibular foramen and your mandibular canal, obviously, within the mandible. So the inferior alveolar nerve, before it can enter that mandibular foramen, it gives this huge motor branch known as the mylohyoid nerve. The mylohyoid nerve travels in the mylohyoid groove along with the mylohyoid artery nerve to mylohyoid. I hope you can remember that. And this is going to give motor fibers to the mylohyoid muscle along with the anterior belly of the digastric. Eventually, the inferior alveolar nerve runs in the mandibular canal and supplies the sensory fibers to all your gums and the lower teeth. Uh, and finally, it emerges from the mental foramen as the mental nerve and that's how it terminates. And the mental nerve, what it does is it obviously supplies the skin of the chin and lower lip. So all you need to know about the mandibular nerve, it's important branches and the branches of the branches and the branches of the branches of the branches. So I know it can get confusing, but always remember in form of bullet points and main points of every structure. Do not get into the confusing details of everything. Make sure you give a read to that, but memorize the important points. So guys, that was all you need to know about the mandibular nerve. Hope you understood the lecture. Thank you so much for watching.